Hey, movie fans, and welcome back to another episode of the Untraded Media Podcast. I would tell you what episode number this is, but frankly, I've lost count because we were off last week. Uh, I was under the weather, and I had no voice whatsoever to contribute to a podcast, which is all vocals. And yeah, but I'm back, and I have two weeks of news to catch up with. But first, Josh, how are you doing? I'm hanging in there, man. It's going to... This particular week is going to be a long week. I've got a, a show that I got to set up for that's out of town. And unfortunately, I have a memorial service for my uncle. So it's going to be a long week. But obviously, as always, this is one of the best parts of my week where you and I get to hang out and talk about movies. So I'm down to get this going whenever you are, man. Well, our thoughts and prayers go out to your family. And let's, let's talk some movies and get your mind off things for a little bit, shall we? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, I don't know if this is the best way to kick it off, but <laughs> this is the first in the notes. We have Shrek and Puss in Boots getting a reboot. <sighs> sure. <laughs> sure. I guess what at, at this point, uh, what's the what's the rule? It's like uh, every if it's. Well, if it's been out for longer than eight years or something like that, it's a, it's free game for reboot. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Because that's movies. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to go with 15 years old. The first one was first like 2001, 2002, maybe. Really? Yeah. So it's 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 been a bit. So. I mean, I guess for us who grew up with Shrek and, and Puss in Boots, it's it's definitely, it feels like recent memory, especially with the, uh, the YouTube videos, Shrek is Love, Shrek is Life. Don't look them up if you want your life ruined. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, sure. Why not? I mean, uh, I would have liked if we could just, you know, come up with a new content instead. Of, but, I mean... I don't know. I think on the side of the fence that I fall on on this is probably the same as uh, when Steve Carell was asked uh, if The Office could ever come back in today's climate, and he said no because the way that the the show's comedy works, uh, a lot of people get really offended really quick if that came out now. So, and I, I think it, that's that's. If they keep everything the same, you know, in a reboot, it's probably going to swing the same direction. What I find interesting is the people behind this reboot are the people that made Despicable Me, which could either be really good or really bad. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. I mean, to to be fair, the Despicable Despicable Me movies... I could take her, take her leave. The first, the first one's a lot of fun to me. Oh yeah. And, but, uh, um, for me personally, um, I like the first despicable me and then the other two are just kind of average. I'm all for a Puss in Boots remake or reboot because I hated Puss in Boots. Um, so I'm all for more. He deserves a better movie. But yeah, um, absolutely. Transitioning to something that I am very excited about now. <laughs> you yeah. know where I'm going with this. I'm, I'm yeah. going to suck it up through all this coughing that I got going on back here because I'm getting too excited. Um, <laughs> it's also building up the dramatic tension. But, <laughs> Ewan McGregor, my boy, my man, Ewan McGregor, has been cast as Black Mask in Birds of Prey. I went... From zero to a hundred, real quick on this movie. Well, I mean, to your credit, like, I don't think either of us were really excited at all about Birds of Prey, because re- there's nothing really that they've said that, as far as what the movie's about, but outside of all these characters are going to be in it. But first of all, you, the, for this, they've done two things. First of all, you said black black. Black Mask is going to be in the movie, which we have never had a live-action Black Mask, at least not to my knowledge. No, I love Black Black Mask. Uh, Really, the only iteration of Black Mask that I can think of off the top of my head is in the animated film uh, uh, Under the Red Hood. 
Yes, it's fantastic. And by the way, if anybody wants to watch something that's incredible, go watch that. Uh, Jed Sensen Eccles plays, does the voice for Red Hood, and it's perfect. Also, did you see that? Pic- Side note, really quick, just because Red Hood. Um, did you see the pictures of Jensen Eccles Jensen from this Eccles. past Halloween? Oh, dude. Yeah, I did. <laughs> He's just trolling us now. Yes, he is. Really, at this point. Because it's just not fair because he, he actually looks perfect for the role, and I never thought I would say that either. Um, anyway, regardless, side thought, side notes. Um, <laughs> having Black Mask in, in, in the movie alone makes me kind of excited. And then and the cast I is really good for this movie too. Yeah, I would agree. I I don't know how yet how I feel about Ewan McGregor as Black Mask. I love Ewan McGregor as much as you do. I don't um, know about that, man. Oh uh, yeah, okay, I don't know. It's like kind of like in Scrubs. Uh, <laughs> let's just not even talk about the, that reference anyway. Um, <laughs> it's just guy love, a, man. It's just guy I love, um, but I he wouldn't be my pick for this role, or mainly because he's not he's British. But I don't know if that's going to really play that much, much into a factor. That, 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 that much me. into a factor. Um, I'm just not used to seeing Ewan McGregor as the bad guy. Also fair. He's almost always a so good maybe this guy, is for him. Yeah. So maybe this will be a, a maybe be a turning point, going from being Christopher Robin to Black Mask. <laughs> he goes down a very very dark path. Um, yep, very dark. Transitioning from something that I'm excited about to something I'm super confused about, but thus is the nature of the movie industry. We're getting a sequel to 2000's Gladiator. What? <laughs> so, yeah. Do the makers of this movie, of this sequel, know what happened at the end of the original Gladiator? Uh, probably. Yeah, I, I would. I would. I, I would think so. Because it's Ridley Scott coming back to make it. So what I think happened. Bear with me here. <laughs> I think. Ridley Scott was staying in his mansion from all the money he made from all the alien movies, despite how bad some of them are. Um, and he was like, you know, I'm really bored. I should, I should make another movie. Should I do something original? Eh, and see, when you're bored, sometimes you just want to do something that's easy. Oh, hey, look, let's make a Gladiator sequel. Why not? Like uh, it, it does. It's so out of the blue, and it doesn't make sense. It's yeah. Well, at least it's not Maximus's story continuing. From the synopsis that I've heard, it's um, Joaquin Phoenix's character's like nephew, the kid that was in it, him and as, as an adult. So, <laughs> so we're taking the stereotypical um, sequel route. That's that feels more like a cash grab rather than a, a good story. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, well, cool. As long as we're all on the same page, I'd be more interested in the if this was the Ridley Scott of even 10, 15 years ago. But lately, he is the definition of hit or miss. I've heard The Martian was really good. Haven't gotten around to seeing oh, not, really a lot of really subpar movies of his lately that are a shell of a what his movies used to be oh yeah so i guess we'll see um obviously i i'm a big person of latency um I'm, yeah outside of a few things on this on, the, on this list of, of topics we're going to talk about there's very few things that i'm going to judge up front yeah um next up we've got a project that is seemingly been in development hell for at least a decade or so. So I took this confirmation with a grain of salt, but I kind of believe it this time around. Uh, Bad Boys 3, starring Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, is finally, finally happening. I don't have any attachment to the Bad Boys franchise, but I know that this movie has, quote-unquote, 
been happening for a lot of years now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, good for the Bad Boys fans, I guess, out there. <laughs> so it. one of the first, you know, when you're 13 and, you know, us people with stable families, we, my dad took me out to have the talk, right? And we were in a hotel and after everything, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, so you want to watch some TV? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he's like, cool. So you're, you're, you know, older now, so you can watch whatever you want. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so the first thing we flipped to, flipped to happened to be Bad Boys 2. So Bad Boys 2 was like the first <laughs> non-PG movie that I've ever, that I ever saw. You know what mine was? What? X Men: The Last Stand. Well, that's your. That's what your. Oh man, I'm so yeah. sorry. I was because Bad Boys Two is definitely better than that. Um, Dude, a squirrel dead on the side of the different. road is better than that. <laughs> um, but so I, I kind of have some fond memories of the Bad Boys series, and but from what I've seen, like this is what I've seen. Sorry, this is like totally on now because Will Smith and. Um, Oh, uh, what is the other guy's name? Martin it's Lawrence. Martin Lawrence. Oh my goodness. Rebound. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, um, they've been like posting pictures together, announcing announcing it on their on, like Instagrams and stuff. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um. Yeah. So I, I as much of a grain of salt as I'm going to take it because of this movie has been in development hell. I think it's more likely that it's, it, it's actually happening this time because I think I've a promo, like a, a promo, like a teaser poster as well. So, hmm. what I would like to see happen is, you know how in the first two Bad Boys, Will Smith is like the epitome of cool. Yes, he is. I would love it if for Bad Boys three, he's that uncle that was awesome at one point and is trying to cling on to that even though he's 10 to 15 years older and he clearly doesn't know the current generation. Oh, yeah. But then, see, the only issue with that is that was basically Martin Lawrence's character in the first two. So then, so what Martin is Martin Lawrence, Lawrence going to do? Out normal one. Yeah, fair. Okay. Well, he's also always been the normal one, the one with the family, the one that, like, like no, like, you don't do that kind of, I don't know. Well, we'll see. I mean, it really could be <laughs> Martin Lawrence is still in the in the field or whatever, and then um, he has to bring Will, Will Smith Smith's back. character. Is, yeah, I mean, Will Smith has kind of gone like the way of his Hitchcock character, and he's always drinking. <laughs> I'd be down for that. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm down. honestly, I, I've always liked the chemistry between those two, so I'm I'm down for whatever at this point. Speaking of down for that. This, I don't know if I am yet. However, I'm not as judgmental as a lot of other people I'm seeing out there. Um, Henry Cavill has given us the first official look as him as Gerald. I think I'm saying that right. As Gerald in the Witcher series on Netflix. I don't hate this nearly as much as everyone else. However, I can see why people don't like it. Well, Josh, what did you think? Well, I just, I didn't know that we were casting him as Raiden from the Mortal Kombat series. Yeah, I thought yeah, we were yeah. doing it. <laughs> I know, dude. As soon as I saw this, I shot you a text because I it doesn't look good because there's a lot of ways to do white hair that doesn't look like a wig. But I, I know I'm with you though. It's it's the it's the first look, so I'll. I'll let it pass for now, but if it still looks like this later on... Mm. I have a couple thoughts on this, and one that I'm going to put my aluminum tinfoil hat on for. Um, Obviously. Yeah, that's that's what I do. Um, but in the world of sanity for now, I don't mind it, primarily one, because I don't have that much of an emotional attachment to the Witcher franchise, but sure. um, this is... The beginning of season one. This character hasn't really gone through a journey yet, so he's still a noob, and that's totally fine with me that he doesn't have a beard or the big old scar. He's allowed to age if the show does well that they're going to get him to the point that he is in in The Witcher 3. Now, (coughs) tinfoil hat time as I'm collecting myself. 
Maybe. Just maybe. He doesn't have a beard for a reason. Dun dun dun. No way. <laughs> this is lumps into another news story that uh, we were going to talk about in a couple stories, but we'll lump it in here now. So follow my psychotic train of thought here. Oh, I think I think I already know where you're going. So Shazam has gone back for reshoots. It's m- nothing big. Every movie goes back for reshoots. It's like a two week shoot. Maybe. Just maybe. Warner Brothers and Henry Cavill put their differences aside and stopped joking around, and they're having Superman cameo in the Shazam movie. Just a brief, quick cameo, and they need him clean-shaven for that because they're not going to go through that fiasco again. Yes. Hmm. That, that's very interesting. Hmm. <laughs> that's a... I, I, I want that as much as you do. Um, yes, I think definitely that very you've been... Yeah, you've been more vocal about your your disdain for the the way that that whole relationship between WB and um, Henry I stand with Cavill. Been. I know we all do. It's okay. Um, well, not maybe all of us. But, However, uh, I'll let you finish your thought, and I'll put my tinfoil hat back on. Okay, so I think I'm. I think I'm with you. I and that, you've made a very good point. Uh, he, this is this, this, this Man of Steel argument all over again. Like this isn't Superman. This isn't the guy. Blah 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 blah. Well, he hasn't gone through anything, and that's to me. If that's what Henry's going to be known for, is starting a series and being able to go through a journey to look a certain way. That's awesome. I'm so down with that because you're right. Like he hasn't gone through anything, and you don't necessarily get to respect a certain look. Unless you go, you understand where that look has come from. Yeah, there needs to be a story to the look, and I completely get that. So, I'm going to slap that tinfoil hat back on and be my psychotic self and say something radical that I'm not hearing a lot of people say. Okay. Henry Cavill's not done as Superman. Of course not. There's no way. There is no way that he would give that character up that easily. I think there's some secret plans. I think he was leaving, and WB saw that he was serious about leaving. And I think they've worked out some form of agreement. Why? He's been taken to Instagram to share some very cryptic messages that can be interpreted as a lot of different things. But his wordage... And his attitude about different things makes me think we don't know the whole story. And no, neither WB or Henry Cavill has come out and said, I'm done. I think we're not getting the whole story here. This could be, again, me with my tinfoil hat on. But I, I don't think we're done with him yet. And I think, I, I, he, I think <coughs> as I'm slowly dying, I'm holding out a hope. <laughs> that he is in Shazam. I'm going to yeah. put my money where my mouth is and say he is, in fact, in Shazam. Interesting. And I think that all circles back to the, when we had originally had this conversation. Um, a couple, I think it was like two, three weeks ago. But, no, it was, about a, it was a month ago because I think it was before November. I'm sorry, October. Um, anyway, <laughs> slide details. Um this all circles back to the conversation that Henry Cavill's Superman has been the most consistent thing about the this jumbled mess that is the DC cinematic cinematic universe. So, and he's been the most consistent performer, the most consistent character. So, why would you let that get away when that's really close to maybe the only good thing about your series right now? So, I'm, yeah, I'm with you, dude. I I, I think. This isn't done. I think that I don't see any reason why they would let him just walk away. Well, before we get on another DC tangent, as we are yeah. prone to do, um, we have a bit of interesting news because that's all we discuss here. Frankly, is the most riveting and interesting news, like Shrek Obviously. reboots. Um, this is on the complete other end of the spectrum of a Shrek reboot, though. Um, Breaking Bad is getting a movie. Okay. Um, the the others are dead. They're withered. 
the cow is about to die. Just let let, let him die in peace. Like, well, no, I'm I okay. I don't think I've ever been quiet on how I don't think Breaking Bad is 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 as good as everybody says it is. Ooh, hot take there. Yeah, no, I don't think it's that good. Um, I think the characters of Jesse and Walter are very good. I think they're they're very interesting, but the series that, that's wrapped around them, I don't think I really care for at all. It's like Sons of Anarchy, but none of the good parts. Interesting. Um, but that's my my take. That's probably why I'm not interested in this news at all. <laughs> from what I've heard, this is going to be a Jesse movie, which uh, okay. It well, we got less, one. Oh, I don't really? know how I feel about. It. I like Breaking Bad as a show. I got into it in college thanks to our gateway drug friend Cody. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not dying. I swear. Um, but the uh, one. The show ended how it needed to end, so this just feels weird to me. The only hope that I have in it is Vince Gilligan, the show creator, is coming back for this movie, which I find interesting, but I have enough faith in him as a storyteller and what he did with the series to be confident in a movie. Well, Fair. that was that story. Um, uh, hold on. One last little take. Um, first of all, we already got a Jesse movie. It was called Need for Speed, and it was awful. Um, second of all, uh, I, I agree with your point, however, about the original director coming back, but however, uh, movies write and flow a lot different than TV shows. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, that's my, that's my take. Our last news speaking story of things of the that day. Are dead, hmm? I said, speaking of things that are dead. Yes. You're looking at the sheet too. Yes, sir, I am. I always do. Yeah. All right. Speaking of things that are dead, just like Josh said, Kathleen Kennedy, the person in charge of Lucasfilm, has come out and said that the Boba Fett movie that they were planning is officially dead. Josh, in other news, water is wet. Yeah. Like, uh, in order for something to be dead, it had to be alive at one point. <laughs> so, you're saying the Texans have never been alive? Uh, hey, 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 hey. I need you to chill on, 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 my, on my boys because I'm repping them right now on my T-shirt. But <laughs> we, are on a, we, we are on a six win, six game winning streak. Don't don't come at me with that. Um, I was going to go with the Browns. Anyway, they're surprising me this year. Well, I mean, sometimes you look at poop and it surprises you. Jeez. Um, but no, I, 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 I stand by my point, though, is that Really, the only life that the idea of a Boba Fett movie could happen was in the fans' eyes. Well, kind of like a that. Boba Fett movie. But you know what threw I it mean, off the it rails, was right? Slated, but that, doesn't, that was slated. That they, they were like, hey, it, it might happen. But oh, I mean, no, 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 companies no. about Yeah. It, it had a director, it had everything, but one movie, one movie. Threw a Boba Fett down the tubes. You know what movie that was? Yes, Solo, but no. I haven't seen it yet. Really? Nope. Earlier. Really? Rogue One? Earlier. Oh. Yeah. Um, Fan uh, or stick? Really? So, Boba Fett from all the reports that I've read, was originally supposed to be directed by Josh Trank, who did Fan Four Stick and Chronicle. However, due to his quote-unquote behavior, trashing hotel rooms, being an overall dick on the set of Fan Four Stick, and just being a horrible director, um, the producer, who was tight with Kathleen Kennedy and um, is one of the producers um, for Star Wars, I believe, of Simon Kinberg, told... Star Wars about his behavior on the set of Fan Four Stick, and they more or less kicked him off the project a week before Star Wars Celebration. Really? Oh yeah. Honey. There's a whole long story with this. Oh wow. Okay, because I was under the impression that 
they were like, all right, we're going to do all these anthology movies. And then Solo happened and it didn't do near as well as they wanted it to. Oh, no. This Even though it, it still did reasonably well for the story. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. This, okay. is, this is why well, you work with me. I mean, but then why wouldn't the you just journalism. find a new director? Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, because you're smarter than me on this stuff. But why wouldn't you just find a new director? I think that was the part of their plan, but um, then Rogue One happened and Solo happened. I think it just kept getting pushed further and further down onto the back burner, even further behind in my Obi Wan movie. I will never give up hope on that. <laughs> Good luck. I want one just I like know. you, but I have a new man. So the one thing positive positive note I will take with this is that yes. That means a Boba Fett solo movie is done, is dead. However, a bounty hunter movie or a Mandalorian movie would still be in the works. Uh, well, not we'll shoot that one down, down too. No, give me my Mandalorians. I need them. Hey, hey, hey! You you stop your talking right there and let me finish. Okay. I shoot it down as a movie because we're getting that Mandalorian TV show. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Hey, they don't you stay in that tone of voice. It's Sean Favreau. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. And Fine. he's not directing all the episodes. We have some other directors doing episodes, like what we do in The Shadows and Thor Ragnarok director Taika Wahiti. Look, man, I don't need you coming all up in here with your facts Ruining my emotional outbursts. <laughs> this, is, this is why we work. I level you out. <laughs> oh, I know. I mean, because we got enough. Uh, I got some really good taste of the Mandalorians um, in um, not Rogue One, um, Re- uh, Rebels. Yes, which I'm still way behind in. But if Jin Urso, I, like, not if, Jin Urso, um, Sabine Wren doesn't show up in the Mandalorian, I'm going to be ticked. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, or at least, like, a mention of her. Oh, great. Okay, I'm going to take that back only because it depends on the time period. Because uh, if they're gonna... It's after Return of the Jedi, I think. Okay. That makes sense. And she's alive. Then she, we know that. Yeah, then she should show up. Because the, the only th- thought I had was if they were going to take it all the way back and actually do the Mandalorian Wars... Then yeah, that's like that's like before episode one. Uh, episode yeah, before episode one, it's like way back there. So yeah, but that river under river underneath the bridge. Um, yeah, yeah. no, I, I I think, and you know what? Maybe that's what they're saving him for. Maybe they're gonna they're, they they want to build him in a TV universe, not on on, on a movie. Because I if consider we learn, that. I wouldn't be. That's yeah. actually not a bad idea. Have him show up on the Mandalorian. Absolutely. Granted, time period wise, they're going to have to explain how he got out of the Sarlacc. Now, I hear all of you extended universe people going, "There's stories on that, but they're not canon." So shut your mouths. We don't have any canon stories of him surviving Return of the yes. Jedi yet. Because you're gonna don't don't come at me with that. Because my brother and I have this discussion all the time because. He reads extensively um, a lot of extended universe stuff, um, and to be fair, the stuff that he reads is really good. So, like, he doesn't read the weird ones, like where like Leia oh, and Luke end up getting together and stuff like that. But um, or, or the one where Leia and Chewie get together. Jeez, Lord, let's not even talk about that one. Um, yeah. But ugh, mm, 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 no, I'm good. But. The, I I think maybe that uh, that that's the positive that I, I'm trying to take out of this is that maybe they saw what happened with Solo and they're like, okay, Boba Fett deserves some respect after we screwed him out of Return of the Jedi. Let's give him some you know some kind of thing to do in the Mandalorian, dude. What if what if he comes back and he plays like. Oh crap! Um, spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't watched, isn't all the way caught up on Rebels. Pause for you to for anybody that's waiting for spoilers. 
Okay, what if they did, they took Boba Fett and did a Darth Maul thing with him? So he comes back and he becomes a mentor. Ooh, like Sabine goes under some guy's wing for a whole season yeah. under the mask and he takes off the mask and it's the guy from Attack of the Clones. Yes. Even, or even that, like, just have him, like, talk to us and stuff like that. Maybe he's got scars on his face or maybe he's disfigured because he was in the Sarlacc. And then towards the end of the, the end of this first season, we haven't seen his Mandalorian armor this entire season and then we get a glimpse of it like in a closet or something. And it's yes, Boba Fett. It, we just like that would be the green awesome. Like a back shot of the rocket launcher and the helmet. Exactly. Almost like a almost a replica shot of the one in um that fan made trailer. Attack of the Clone. Where it, no, it's a, a Attack of the Clones when um Oh yeah, when Obi Wan first meets Jango, and it, he like closes the closes the the, the door, and yeah, you just yeah, barely yeah. see the impact. Just enough to go, oh okay, I know who this is. Oh yeah, and then everyone loses their mind. Bro, no, yeah, it would, oh man, you want you want people to go watch The Mandalorian after season one? I mean, it, regardless how good the show is, that's how you do it. That oh, absolutely, that that will sell people on a season two. But. Yeah, so Boba Fett currently is the movie is dead, but I think the character still has a chance to live on. Oh yeah, depending. So depending on certain things. Before we get on to our main discussion of the week, the best movie cliffhangers of all time, this podcast is sponsored by Josh. Do you have one? I do. Go for it. This this episode is sponsored to in part by. KT tape, kinesiology tape, keeping your body together when you can't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, oh, man. I, no, I, just a little sidebar, dude. I've been using a lot of kinesiology tape lately because um, so we, I, I've started to get, get pretty good at, at the old wrestling. And so I have to take more. <laughs> take more finishers from from uh, more experienced people. So like I have big old bruises on my arms right now. And so I'm I'm always like in a lot of pain and dude, this tape has just saved me in it helps so you many hang ways. in there when you need it most. Yeah. Speaking of hanging it, it, in there, how did we hang in there after these movie endings? Oh, you're off, lol. You're off, boo. Boo. <laughs> that was too good of a segue. All right. I'm going to kick us off with arguably, I, I don't even think arguably, this to me is the greatest movie cliffhanger of all time. Empire Strikes Back. Luke, I am your father. Sorry. No. I am your father. Sorry, I almost misquoted it there, but to me, that yeah, is the biggest do, cliffhanger of all that. time. I, so, I wouldn't qualify that ending of Empire Strikes Back as a cliffhanger. It's more of a feeling of despair and not knowing where the, okay, you know what? No, you're right. It's a cliffhanger. Never mind. Say, what you do you think it's a cliffhanger then, if not a feeling no, of no, despair? Because like, it is. Because no, you're right. You're right, though. But like, to me, I guess, when we say cliffhanger, I think the ending of the Hob- of the first Hobbit movie. The second one, you mean? Yes. No, I the ending was small. Yes. Yeah, I know you're right. It's the second one. Sorry, I don't care about those movies so much, I forgot what happens in each one. Um, you know, nothing screams cliffhanger more than Ed Sheeran. <laughs> anyway. No, but yeah, I, I, I agree. So, Empire Strikes Back, I think ends in it. That to me is the epitome of a, of a cliffhanger because it ends and it does. It's not like the Hobbit and just something big's about to ha- happen and they just pull a rug out from under you. It's is, like, that's Oh man. Like, oh, just a different yeah. kind. Yes. But I, I think I prefer storytelling wise an empire strikes back kind of cliffhanger of, Oh man. I don't know if there's going to be another one of these movies. And this ended in a way that I need more 
Like, no, Luke, Luke, what are you going to do with this information considering you just kissed Leia? <sighs> anyway. We don't know that one until Return of the Jedi. I know, I know. Be alone. I think it's just. weird for our generation. I don't remember a time when I didn't know Darth Vader was Luke's father. Also, yeah, no. Like, true. it's something we're born with, but trying to take ourselves out of that situation, if we were in the theater for Empire Strikes Back, that's that would suck to wait three years with no internet, no speculation as to what the heck that ending means. Yeah. Oh, and, and Han's gone. Han's dead. Okay. All of a sudden, this character that everybody fell in love with is gone. Yeah, because they didn't know if Harrison Ford would come back or not. And then we yeah, ended up with Return of the Jedi, which, for some reason, people... The older I get, I see more and more people hating on Return of the Jedi. I freaking love Return of the Jedi. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not near the best of the original trilogy, but it, it's definitely it has not... the best moment, I think. Okay. Sidebar yeah, for the cliffhanger discussion, because I, I want to know what, what moment you're talking about. I still think the greatest... It's one of the best moments in all the Star Wars trilogy um, is the moment when Luke is hiding from Vader in the final fight and half of his face is covered in shadow and the other half is covered in light. And Vader says, if you cannot be turned, what about your sister? And Luke just snaps and goes ham on Vader. That, to me, is the best character moment of he has no form, no grace whatsoever in his fighting. It is just sheer rage. And seeing the symbolism of when he almost kills Vader, takes his hand off, sees his own hand, sees that he could very easily become his father. This whole symbolism of that scene. And then his shirt gets unbuttoned. And you can see it was black the whole time. But underneath the shirt, it's white material underneath, signifying that Luke is still good underneath. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. No, yeah. Okay, I'm with you. (laughs) You're like, oh, nope, I got nothing. I got nothing. I'm not even going to argue about that. All right, so back to our discussion about cliffhangers. <laughs> segway. Uh, not as good of a segue as it was before. but um, So I guess let's just go ahead and go into, since we've already talked about it, the, the cliffhanger in The Hobbit. <laughs> Which is literally, I, if I remember correctly, it literally takes place on the edge of a cliff. L- legitimately. Well, for almost everybody. Yeah. Uh, edge of a cliff, edge of a lake. Mountain. <laughs> One of the two. Um, so how did, do you like that, that cliffhanger or do you despise it? I like it personally. I'm not a huge fan of the Hobbit movies, but that to me is like one of the best moments in the whole trilogy of literally just going, pulling the rug out from the audience going, yep, we did it. We're cutting the movie right here and you're going to have to wait for the next one. I actually like that move a lot. I, so I go back and forth on it because I really like it for the same reasons you do is like, Hey, something really big is about to happen. Ah, screw you. You'll have to wait. But at the same time, it really made me mad, which to be fair, a good cliffhanger should do that. But it like made me mad for the wrong reasons. Of like how, what were they thinking cutting it here? How, why would you do like? I was so mad that they they cut it there, and I don't know. And, and to me, it personally put a sour taste in my mouth of it. <laughs> More sour of a taste in my mouth for the Hobbit movies. Hmm. Yeah. Well, of all things, to from the Hobbit movies to leave a sour taste in your mouth, really, that's that's what sticks with you. Yeah, I don't know why. Leave me alone. We're not going to talk about the love, the love relationship in the series that should not exist. But, eh, well, yeah, that one, I think, made me more mad than anything else. I don't know why. What about a recent one that I know you don't like, but I personally am a huge fan of it? The Snap from Infinity War. Okay, to your credit... The reasons I don't like it are not because it's a, not a good story move. Story-wise, it's a very good good way to end that movie. It's a very good way to make us really want to see 
the next movie as long as you don't know anything about the the, the contracts and stuff like that. But <sighs> it's a good cliffhanger to make you want to see the next one. And everybody who knows my opinion of Infinity Wars know that knows I'm biting my tongue really hard on that one. But it's it's a good story move. The reasons I don't like it are purely just comic book nerdisms. The nitpicking in you. But yeah, in terms I of know. shocking an audience, even if it, we know it doesn't have long-term effects, we know that. Yeah. Still, sitting in the theater opening night, seeing arguably some of the most popular superheroes fade to dust is going to leave you shocked. It was yes. You knew it was coming because they teased it all the time with the snap, but you didn't think they would actually do it. And when they did do it, take so many big name people, especially yeah. Spider-Man. <laughs> I know. I, I, I think that was the thing that I did appreciate, despite me knowing the contract situation of a lot of people. I haven't been a fan of how local Chris Evans has been about his, but whatever, that's a sidebar for another day. Um, I think seeing all the people go at the end, despite how I felt about the movie, that all about the movie up until that point, seeing everybody that goes, it did leave me with a thought of, wait, who's who's left who's is this because it, it was you're right though it is a good cliffhanger because i was like but now what yeah so, I, it yeah, makes me think right. it it kind of screws over any of the movies after infinity war after avengers 4 that have to come out because yeah. how are you going to show trailers for spider-man or whatever else but um yeah. we'll we'll see in time um, yeah. I don't know if this counts as a cliffhanger or not, but I, for the sake of this discussion, I kind of would put it as it. The ending of Inception. Yes, I'll, I'll take a cliffhanger on that. Yeah. Uh, at, it, at this point, I think we're defining a cliffhanger as something that makes you want, leaves you wanting more. Yeah, it doesn't kind of, doesn't, it leaves it open. And you want more, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because really, that's 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 what uh, Empire Strikes Back would be classified as. Yeah, and as opposed to the, and really Infinity War as well. So, but yeah, I would agree because there's a lot that happens at the end of Inception that makes you wonder. It makes you question the entire movie. Well, because of where you are on that cliff, unless you know the one detail that kind of. Answers yes. everything. Yes, I agree. Do you know what detail I'm talking about? I believe it's the top. No. But because the top the, the top wasn't his totem. Yeah, the top was Maul's totem. He has a different exactly. one. Exactly. Exactly. Which is his wedding ring, and his wedding ring is the uh, yeah. only appears on his hand when he's in a dream. Yes. Okay, so you do know. Yes, absolutely. Uh, come on, man. I'm I'm not as informed as you, but I'm a little bit of a nerdy nerd on this kind of stuff. Um, but no, yeah, it, it definitely. But even then, it still it makes you want knowing still knowing those details. It makes you wonder about where his head is at and how he's how he's feeling emotionally in in, in this in this ending. Um, but yeah, no, I would totally. Inception is a great cliffhanger. So uh, really, up until what the last couple of years, where people kind of put all those details together. Yeah. Because so I mean, it 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 held us for quite a bit of time. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some other good cliffhangers. Did you ever see the movie Prisoners? I did not. I saw. I I, I got to see Gone Girl. But I didn't get to see Prisoners. See Prisoners? I won't talk about it here, but that's another one that could... That's kind of an open-ended slash cliffhanger ending. Um, you know Pirates of the Caribbean movies, right, though? Yes. The end of Dead Man's Chest, when Jack Sparrow is seemingly eaten by the Kraken, that is a cliffhanger. Yes. No, I will... Yeah, absolutely. That actually... So that whole section, to me... 
uh, of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies is incredible. I I don't think if if we're talking about like the best of the Pirates of the Caribbean, one is always going to be the best. Yeah. But the other ones have to be talked about as a collective because you can't just go, well, this one's better than this one because each one has story details that contribute to the other ones. Yeah. And I agree that like, cause when he, Jack Sparrow is seemingly eaten by the Kraken, um, I was like, um, no, you can't do that to me. Yeah. And like, then just what, kind of what follows is one of the best like sequences that. ever. You just kind of assume he survives or something. They're like, there's a loophole. Like, they wouldn't just kill him off in the second movie. Yeah, that's, that's what you tell yourself anyway. <laughs> like, they, they wouldn't, because that was, it's the second movie, man. Like, they wouldn't, you, 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 you have him for one movie. They, it haven't, hasn't been established with us yet that, like, you know, Jack is, Jack is always going to be around. He's always going to fight. Through his, he's been through everything. He's just always going to be there. But it's, yeah, dude. No, I remember watching that and being really confused and really upset. <laughs> like, you can't, it even you can't more kill confusing. him. And then they made it even more confusing when they brought back Barbosa from the dead as the final shot of the movie. Yes, it made it even more, more, more confusing. But However, you want to see I will say, more? yes, I will say I'm glad they, I don't know why they did. I don't, I don't think they really ever describe how they did it, but Magic. I don't care because I love I love Barbosa, <laughs> so he's back. That's all I care about. Magic, magic, curses and stuff. Um, um, what other cliffhangers we got? Um, naturally, I'm not saying it's a good one, but we're still coming out of the Halloween season. So Halloween five, when Michael's in the prison, and then, then the Man in Black comes and breaks him out. I hate you for bringing that up, but yes. You're um, I just had one. I just forgot it. Dang it. Thanks, Michael Myers. Yeah, screw you, Michael. Hey, um, the new one's majestic. <laughs> like a lion rearing its head as it burps. More like um, burp stomping people. <laughs> also true. Um, let's see, man. Uh... I just had one and it was pretty good. I'm looking oh, at the shelf. Um the the end uh the end of Alien One. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, because it's not clear if she killed the alien and it's not clear if she'll she'll actually survive. But then again, it doesn't really set up for anything to happen after that. So maybe not. But still it it's it definitely like leaves you in a like in a state of, well, that wasn't, like, it's not a happy ending. Like, she's safe, but she's drifting through space. And we haven't, we don't know if the alien survives space or not, so. Yeah, I'm I don't looking know. through the shelf right now, and I, I don't know if I see any, like, that stand out to me. Yeah, because, <gasps> I mean, you could say M. Night Shyamalan movies, but they don't, Stop. those are just terrible twins. Well, this, um, it's a book one, obviously, so the people that read the books knew ahead of time. How familiar are you with Harry Potter? I hate you. You know exactly it, that, that was gonna, It was going to come up eventually, yeah. The end of Half-Blood Prince, when a certain yep. character is booted off the astronomy tower. Yep. So... To be no idea, when really, everything about that character's de- demeanor and the way that he handles that situation gives you, the audience member, the thought that everything's going to end up okay. Nope. So you experienced yeah. it the hard way. Yes, I did. What was that? I did. Oh man, I was upset. I was not okay. Like it happened, and I there was an audible no that came out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I have never hated Malfoy more than in that moment. That was not his fault. 
Snape. I, 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 in that moment, I didn't give a darn. I was like, I'm looking for somebody to blame, and Malfoy, you're the one to blame right now. And then it gets so much worse when they are oh in the yard and they raise their wands to get rid of the clouds. I hate you so much. It's just so bad. Oof. See, Dumbledore's death, even as a kid when I read the books, was like the only literary death that stuck with me. We were on a road trip and we took turns reading it out loud because all of us in the car were like actually following the books. And I remember my mom was reading it in the car. And I still remember it vividly because it, it's freaking Dumbledore dying. And, oh, that's, it's brutal. And it's the worst cliffhanger because going into the final book and then the final movies, they had this whole ad campaign of, do you trust Snape? Do you not trust Snape? And I chose to trust him, and I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I see. Okay, that's a conversation for another day, but I, I really do not like Snape, no matter what you say. Really? Why is that? Um, Nope, nope. Discussion for another day. I, I think he's. Can we agree that done... Neville's the best? Oh yeah, he's the he's the secret um secret chosen one. He's the Sam of Harry Potter. Yeah. All right. So, um, just to kind of get some information, uh, inspiration, I went, I looked up some cliffhangers, um, because there's well, obviously you and I watch so many, so many, um. Uh, movies, it's hard sometimes to keep track of them. Uh, Back to the Future Part 2. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I barely I remember that Avengers, one. Honestly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, Kill Bill, Volume 1. Uh, yeah, because that ends right before the, the big fight. <gasps> oh. Are you caught up on John Wick? Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, John Wick. Two. I love John Wick so much. John Wick Chapter Two, which I actually think supersedes and surpasses the original. I love both John Wicks, but oh, the ending yeah. of John Wick Two makes me so amped for three so hard. Oh, dude, that I'm so ready. I don't know if you could qualify that as a cliffhanger, though. I would because it literally just ends and you need resolution then and there because the story's not done it leaves you dangling for more that is true and you're like is it i don't know if john wick is screwed or all of the earth is screwed that is true because even up at that uh, all the way up to that point john wick is he's the total ba man he's He's awesome yeah exactly and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I don't know if, if even he can, can, can overtake, overcome this challenge. Um, oh, the, the, the thing. Oh, the original? No, well, quote unquote. The remake. Yeah. With the, Kurt Russell. the John Carpenter thing. Yeah. That, and, mm, yes, absolutely. One of the, uh, and the thing in general is one of the best movies ever made. So, there's that. Uh, has that going for it as well? Um, but, yeah, you never truly know if the thing is, is, is dead or not. Um, ooh, Catching Fire? The Hunger Games movie? Only saw the first one, then I gave up. Oh, man. You are not missing anything. Um, <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, ooh... Yes. I don't know why we're not talking about this. We talked about The Hobbit, but the ending of The Fellowship of the Ring. Oh, um, yeah. Because Frodo and Sam Gam- 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 up and they're going to go track Yeah. Gavin. Yeah. And like, Gam- uh, I'm sorry, Bormir's dead, Gandalf's dead, like, Mary Pippin have been kidnapped, Frodo and Slam- Sam are split off, like, Honestly, oh, man. It's weird to think. So normally in a narrative story structure, the end of Act 2 is when your characters are at their lowest point. In Lord of the Rings, it's actually at the end of the first third. I think the end of the yeah. first one ends on a sadder and more down note than the end of the second movie, which is normally when the darkest moment for the characters are, a la Empire Strikes Back. The end of Two Towers is yeah. almost hopeful and like, all right, we got a win here. 
we're going to keep that momentum going straight to Mordor. Whereas Fellowship, it's like our friend is dead. Two of them are probably dead. Two of them have straight up gone missing and gone on their own. What are we going to do? Yeah. Exactly. It's mm, it's so good. Uh, another one, uh, American Psycho, because of how it ends. You don't know if or what in the movie is real at all. Uh, same thing with Blade Runner. It makes some implications very interesting. Um, I'm just kind of running through lists of movies right now just to kind of have stuff. Oh, have you seen The Wrestler? Yes. I don't know if it's yes. a cliffhanger or an ambiguous ending. Yeah, that's fair. Because at this point, the definition of cliffhanger can be very, very skewed. Which, my thoughts on The Wrestler is... So the movie... Spoiler alert. The movie ends with... You think the main character may have died in the ring? And there's always been that ambiguous answer of... Did he die? Did he not? At the end of this movie. And to me, as a viewer, the answer is always... It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter if he died in the ring that night because eventually he will. That's the story that they're telling. Not did he die in this specific moment. It's this life will eventually kill him, but it is how he is choosing to die. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which is definitely the life, life of a wrestler, man. Oh, yeah. Um, Roddy Piper cried when he saw this movie. Oh, I have no doubt. Roddy Piper is... Man, what a guy. What a guy. What a guy. Um, Gone Girl definitely ends in a good cliffhanger. Because, well, yeah, no, I'm going to go cliffhanger on that. I don't know. Have you seen Gone, Gone Girl? Of course I did. I saw it in theaters. No, of course you did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because, obviously, the main character, sort of the main guy, Nick, he's in a really weird spot because he knows everything. But he has no way to prove it. Yeah, that movie. That movie as a whole just messed me up. No, oh, dude. So many things happen that I just am not okay with. Yeah. Mm, Do we have see. any last minute ones that we can think of? <laughs> uh, Matrix Reloaded. <laughs> How did that end? Um, I barely remember it's i remember it being very like well big stuff's about to happen but we're gonna cut it here kind of thing um i'm trying to think uh because i'm also kind of glancing at lists as well um Less Jedi is c- c- popping up a lot, but I, it's not I wouldn't. A cliffhanger. Not, it has not, resolution. Not, not no, Force Awakens. Sorry. Okay, yeah. Force oh. Awakens is more of a cliffhanger than Last Jedi. Actually, Force Again. Awakens is one of. The, yeah, it's like the modern, literally on a cliff. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was going to say that. I was like, literally on a cliff. Cliffhanger <laughs> um, hanging by a cliff. And that's why he's called Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Get out of here. And that is your daily oh, gossip man. between the lions. Oh, man. I, I I appreciate the fact that both of us have seen Between the Lions because there was a time in my life where I thought I hallucinated the whole thing. <laughs> no. That was an amazing <laughs> kid's show. Dancing Smarty Pants, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair, but Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't Fuzzy Wuzzy. Nah, he was a baldy waldy. <laughs> Dude, you made it all the way through that without um, slipping up once. I'm so proud. Thanks, man. It's only because I'm balding now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I identify with, with Fozzie. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, at the end of the day, man, I, cliffhangers are a tricky thing, which in my opinion. Um, because you can either do them and be like, ha-ha, no, like... And nothing is real or everything that you thought about the movie is now incorrect. Or you can go the Hobbit route and be like, hey, something really big is happening. Uh, now we're not going to show you. <laughs> and at least the Hobbit, uh, well, at least they showed us what happens in the next movie, as opposed to what some movies can do and just go, something big's about to happen and then not show us what happens. Um, or you can go the Empire Strikes Back route. 
or even the fellowship of the ring route and go like our characters are in their lowest spot and these heroes we don't know if they're going to be able to bounce back which is the ultimate sign of a good cliffhanger at the end of the day it's a cliffhanger should be part of your narrative story of um it's your darkest point for your characters and you want them to be able to bounce back from it and yeah if done correctly it's an important part of the story but a lot of times people miss the mark and it comes across as sequel bait and i hate that but um yeah there's still plenty of good examples of of good cliffhangers out there they just when they leave the mark when they leave a good mark they last for quite a while and leave a really strong impression um yeah anything else you want to add before we send it home josh uh, not really, man. I mean, at the end of the day, I I think a cliff a good cliff, cliffhanger has to be a part of your story. You can't just be like M Night Shyamalan and do one for the sake of it. Yeah, and what better way to end than on just just Shyamalan, man? Just just Shyamalan. One of these days, we'll have a best and worst of M Night Shyamalan. But until that day comes, I'm Nate. He's Josh. This is the Uncharted Media Podcast. Stay sharp, movie guys and gals.